This is part three of Square Up to Acrylic Painting, where we will be applying the second layer of paint. The yellow layer has dried, and I'm going to use my flat brush, and I'm going to wipe, I'm going to be using quinacridone red. I'll be removing any excess yellow wash that I have already on my palette, but leaving my yellow paint out. Shake up my red a little bit. Put a little bit on my palette. I'll be mixing up a light orange wash. I'm still just using water at this point as my thinner. A little bit of yellow, a little bit of red. Adding some water to thin it out. And I'm just going to wash it over everything except for what I want to be strongly yellow or what I want to be white and again I'm following the form of the of the objects the back surface is flat and the apples are curved so I'll kind of use curved marks on the apples on the curve of the shadow on the ground there just kind of laying in a transparent layer of orange and when I load my brush the color is more intense so I'll put the first marks right after I load it on the places where I want the color to be intense and then as the paint runs out of my brush I put marks where I want the color to be less intense. Another thing is if you use quick strokes it's easier to blend them. If you let a stroke sit too long it'll dry and you'll have a hard edge at that place. That's the shadow on that apple. I'm moving around that yellow spot on that back apple. Kind of painting in some of the details on that top of that back apple. Laying in the background just real quick and loose. Pretty thin painting with a th pretty thin paint. The thinned out acrylic will spread for a little bit and blend a little bit, but if you let it sit too long, it'll dry. So because everything in this image that we're working from in our reference image is sort of tans, browns, yellows, reds, and oranges, I'm basically working in a orange, red, and yellow palette. That's an analogous palette. I will be adding some blue to cool out some shadows a little later on. There are places where the background and the edges of the apple sort of blend together and I'll just go over those areas with the same color paint just to let those areas sort of blend. Where I see more contrast, I paint more contrast, and where I see less contrast, I paint less contrast. Mixing up a little bit more orange. Laying in the cast shadow on the right. Now I'm going to want to lay in some redder areas, but I don't want it to be pure red, so I mixed a little bit of yellow in with it. The red is darker and it's more chromatic, and I'm laying in that shadow on that back right apple and some of those details around the um, stem. And that shadow on the right side of the front apple. That apple has a lot of yellow in it, so I don't want to overdo it. I just want it to be kind of almost a peach color in there. Just 
just looking for places where it appears more red. Rinsing my brush out a little bit. Actually, off camera, I'm wiping my brush with a towel. Next video, I'll show you where I'll add the towel. Now I want some cooler shadows, so I'm going to add some blue. That's the anthraquinone blue. I'll just put a few drops of it on my palette. And take just a small amount, it's a pretty strong color. I mix it first with the um, orange that I have on the top. And I want this to be a, a brown color, a warm brown color. So you start with an orange and you add a little blue to it, then you just have to balance it. If it's too yellow, add a little red. If it's too red, add a little blue. And you just keep doing that until you get the kind of brown you want. So what I want is a cooler brown than I've had, and I'm going to lay in that cast shadow on the right. You can see how that's much darker than what I've laid in already. So by adding the blue to the wash that I'm working with, I'm neutralizing the orange. Blue and orange are opposite on the color wheel, so they kind of neutralize each other. So I'm darkening the colors where the shadows are and also just the local color, but I'm also neutralizing that color, bringing it more into a brown range than such an orange range. So basically, I'm working towards the actual color of the ground, but I'm also trying to get some of the shadows in there as well. Another thing I want you to notice is that as, as I work, the grid becomes less apparent, but it's still visible to me. So that's helpful. Right now what I'm doing is mixing up a slightly different brown for the background. I see the background as being a little bit more yellow than the foreground. The foreground is a little more red, so I'm using a slightly more yellow brown for the background. Right there I feel like the edge of the apple needs to go to the left a little bit, so I just left a little bit of space around that left edge of the apple that I will later come back and paint in red. I think that's what I did. We'll see when I get to it. So in the bottom right, I mean left corner, there's a little bit of a red reflection on the foreground. So I just mixed a little red into the ground right there. So I'm making that part of the surface that the apples are sitting on redder. And then on the left and right in the back, there's a cool shadow. Blue is a cool color, so I'm mixing a pretty thin blue. I'm just going to go over the areas that have a cool shadow with the blue paint. Right now my hand is hiding it, but you'll see it in a second. It looks pretty intense at first, but I'm going to blend it out a little bit so it's not quite so strong. So I take the paint from where I put it and just kind of 
move it in the areas I want it to go. So there you can see that I've spread that blue out a little bit and it's not quite as intense. Picking up a little more blue. I'm going to make the shadow on the right. The apples cast a shadow, uh, they're each their own shadow and then overall the group is casting a bigger shadow. So I hit the horizon line a little bit and a little bit of a cool shadow behind that apple on the right. Also a little curved shadow in that bottom left corner that I just added a little bit. 